Hello, you Linux Fest attendees. First of all, <clears throat> welcome to Bellingham, Washington. And the sculpture I'm going to make that will be for sale or for raffle will be a scene of downtown Bellingham, as you see behind me. However, I'm going to take some artistic liberty. First of all, I'm going to remove that really ugly warehouse and in the industrial buildings. And I may take the artistic liberty of moving the old city hall to closer to under the under Mount Baker so it can all fit on a piece of engraved glass. Here is kind of a very rough drawing and what I hope to achieve with this um, sculpture. What the sculpture would be, would be a three-dimensional depiction of part of uh, the skyline of Bellingham as viewed from the water. This is what, uh, kind of a very crude isometric view from the front of it. This was this, what the side of it would look like. We start with a metal base. Now in front of the metal base, in, in, now in front of the metal base would be a metal panel that will hold two pieces of glass. But that metal panel will also be burnished in a way that it would look like water as illuminated by LEDs mounted here. So it would look like the water, it symbolized the waterfront. These two pieces of glass here, which are these two, will be hand engraved depictions of the Bellingham skyline that I would do using a diamond engraver. This, by the way, is the same method that glass was engraved during the Renaissance. Now behind those two pieces of glass, which will be held at the base, will be two pieces of metal. Those pieces of metal will be hand cut using a plasma cutter to depict two hills. The first one will be a low hill. The second one will be kind of a higher hill in the background. Now behind those two will be steel struts supporting a third piece of glass that will be partially concealed by the pieces of metal depicting the hills in front of it. But on that piece of glass, I will try to hand carve a depiction of the tip of Mount Baker as it peaks from over the hills behind Bellingham. Now, to give you an idea how this would be lit, each of the pieces of glass will have LEDs shining up the edge of the glass so that the carvings will reflect the glass from inside. Now, for the pieces of metal, there'll be those two pieces of metal. Right in front of each piece of metal, but concealed from the view of the user it would be a series of LEDs aimed up along the sheet of metal and I will be grinding patterns using a surface grinder and the light will refract off of the grindings to create a shimmering effect on the metal. The, to go back to the main part, the first hill, the lower one, will be lit with a combination of yellow and green LEDs to depict kind of a, a low hill in the foreground. The hill further back will be lit with a combination of blue and cyan LEDs to kind of symbolize a hill way off in the distance. Then of course peeking over those hills will be the glass engraving of the tip of Mount Baker that will be edge lit with a combination of white and blue LEDs to try to symbolize the snow capped peak of Mount Baker. It turns out I had a stroke of good luck as part of this effort to make a sculpture for Linux Fest Northwest here in Bellingham. 
Once upon a time, when I was still working for Intel Corporation in Hillsboro, Oregon, as a Linux security engineer, I had proposed to make a piece of art for the annual Intel United Way auction. Well, I made a milestone in that my donation, or my proposed donation, was the first ever to be officially rejected by corporate services at Intel because, according to their email to me, they had moral turpitude issues with the piece. The piece was to depict Abraham Lincoln and Jesus Christ getting ready to get married before a Haight-Ashbury hippie priest at the Olympics. So because that proposal got rejected, I still have the frame for that art piece, and I'm going to use that frame for this art piece to depict Bellingham before Mount Baker. The next step on this project is to do what's called glass engraving or glass carving. This is different than glass etching that you do with chemicals. This is not using chemicals at all, it's strictly mechanical. It's going to be hard for me to show you because of the limitations of the camera. This tool in my hand is a diamond drill. The, the, the bit on this drill is a one millimeter diameter ball that is impregnated with tiny particles of industrial diamonds. Diamond is harder than glass. I'm going to step on the control pedal. You probably cannot hear it. But that ball is now spinning at 50,000 revolutions per minute. I'm going to gently touch the ball to the glass. If I hear the high pitch whine. And you can see that I'm creating a line in the glass. So, as I draw the city skyline, I have to do it all by freehand using this to carve it into the glass. Now because this is carving glass, if I make mistakes, you cannot erase it, therefore you're gonna have to, I will have to work around the mistakes or accept that since this is a piece of art, there will be minor mistakes in it. This is a very lengthy, tedious process. So I'm gonna stop the video now and, sh and come back on when I'm nearly done with the Bellingham skyline. Okay, I just completed my engraving or carving using a diamond tool. I got five engravings. And I'm gonna show them to you by shining an LED at the bottom. So this is an LED flashlight. You place it down against the black surface. You can see how the light will refract from the engraving. Now the engraving is actually on the other side. So you're viewing it from inside the glass. Now this one happens to be an engraving of the old Bellingham City Hall, which is one of the most well-known icons in Bellingham. Uh, this is an engraving of the Mount Baker Theater, which is yet another icon. Now, uh, this one's an interesting one. There is a building in downtown Bellingham called the Bellingham Tower. However, what you see of it today is only this part of it. The spire is no longer there, but back in the 1920s, that building was the Bellingham Hotel. It was the hotel to stay in in downtown Bellingham, and they had an illuminated sign on a spiral at the very top. I figured to add that for a little, a little nostalgia. Next, we have a fairly iconic old office building on Holly Street in downtown. 
It's used by a group of artists right now. And finally, on the campus of Western Washington University is a fairly famous building called the Old Main. And this is a attempt to um, engrave it on a piece of glass. So I'm going to take the five engravings. I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to take the five engravings. And I'm going to mount them in two rows in the frame. I'm going to take, move this aside. The first row would be something like this. And they will be glued to the frame so that the engraved side faces backwards. Because the viewer is going to be in front of this. And once these are glued, they'll be glued with a silicon glue at the base like so. Once that glue dries, then, we, um, then glue a number of LEDs underneath each one. I propose to light each one a different color. And then once those LED glue and those LEDs had dried, then I'll put a piece of masking tape over the glass, over the LED, to prevent the colors from mixing with the second row. Then I'll proceed to glue down the second row of engraving. So it would be something like this, again with the engraved side towards the back. Then once again I glue LEDs to the bottom facing up. And once that all dries, then I'm all set to start working on the two metal pieces representing the hills. So I'm going to proceed to glue down the glass pieces and set the LEDs, which is extremely boring to watch. I'll get back with you when I'm ready to plasma cut the pieces of metal for the hills. La, 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 la. This is not a guitar or a banjo. I thought it'd be funny. It's only a piece of stainless steel. But I'm going to try to transform this into two hillsides that surround Bellingham. I'm going to do that using an instrument called a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter is similar to the acetylene cutting torch you may have used in shop class. Now, unlike the acetylene cutting torch, it uses an electric arc, which of course generates ultraviolet light, that's why you have to wear a welding cut. And also, as a precaution, should wear gloves because the metal coming out of this, which will spray in every direction, is molten. Now, when you use this instrument, I'll show you what the flame looks like. It's similar to a cutting torch. I'll show you. It's a flame that is uh, hotter than the melting point of steel. Now, very important, and I always forget this, when you're using a plasma cutter, please remember to connect the ground. Otherwise, you get some very weird results. Now, to show you well, demonstrate, I've got a piece of scrap steel. This is just a saw blade I bought for 50, 50 cents at the restore here. And I'm going to try practicing doing freehand cutting using the plasma cutters. So I'm going to put the hood down and let's see what happens. By the way, the water is to catch the molten steel from the cutting. But there you go. That's a fairly good cut. Now, if I'm successful in doing that with this stainless steel sheet, um, I'd be uh, quite happy and the job would be done. So, what I'm going to do off camera, because it's a bit tedious and boring, I'm going to put this onto the uh, table. I'm going to cut it right here. 
Then cut it here, so I have two plates, one for each hill, and cut an appropriate hill for each one. So I'm going to get off camera now and be back with you shortly. assembly with the engraved glass plates glued in place and the piece of metal clamping them down as you can see all this under here is the LEDs and the wiring now these here are the LEDs that will shine onto the first hill so I'm going to turn this around and you won't be able to see it very well now because of light. I'm going to turn the LEDs on. And that's going to give you a, a, an idea of what it will look like. I'll turn one of the lights off. Maybe that will help a little bit. But now my next step is that I have to figure out how to place the hills. Now here are the two hills, the metal hills I made. Now I'm going to put the lower one up against the buildings and I guess this looks like an appropriate height. You might see the green in the background. That's going to change it a little bit because this metal has not yet been burnished. So I'll place it about this height. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go back outdoors, outdoors my shop, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to burnish the metal so the LEDs can shimmer off of it in a better way. So I'm going to take a surface grinder and grind like in circles on the metal. And then I'm going to do is create a mounting so the Metal can be bolted on to here, so I have to weld on some extensions at either end and then a, a something with a loop or a hole so it can be bolted onto this nut and it's going to be st st um, stood off a bit so these LEDs can shine onto the surface that I'll burnish. So let's go on outside to the shop. Now here we have the sheet of metal, I clamped it down to the bench. Uh, this tool is called an angle grinder. It is an abrasive wheel that rotates horizontally. And we're just going to rub it against this metal like so. so here we go. the quartz crystals. Now adding those was quite boring, so I went ahead and did that off camera. And behind it you can see a sample of the light work and the electrical work. The lights for the crystals. And what you see here are the lights for the second hill, which is going to rise behind this. Now, over here is the base, okay? It will face 
like face you like this. Now behind it, you notice some wiring and some LEDs. Now these are the blue LEDs that are going to shine on here. So that's going to be the deep blue sea, the water. Because Bellingham is in the water. So the way this will go together, I can do this without dropping it, because if I drop it, of course, I have to start the whole thing over again. We come around here like so, and we insert these bolts into these holes, something like this, and if I don't drop it, I guess it would be okay. Uh, let's make sure that everything fits correctly because if any of the wires touch we get a short circuit and that's another uh, embarrassment. Of course it's hard for me to embarrass. I most likely would not be embarrassed by a short circuit. I would laugh at it but others would be embarrassed by the way I laugh because I can laugh loud enough they can hear it from the other side of the, the city and that may not be good. So. Here is the final metalwork, the second hill, and the bracket on which to mount the piece of glass that will have the engraving for the peak of Mount Baker. And the hill will go on back like this, and I'm going to briefly turn the lights on up like that. Now you can see the uh, the cyan lights shining on the upper hill and if I move it back and forth you can see it shimmering. So my next and final step will be to take the piece of glass that I will be carving with the mountaintop of Mount Baker and carve that and then put it here and then the very last step will be to take a series of white and blue LEDs that will light the mountaintop and they'll be mounted under the um, glass like where my finger is right here. Once that's done, then see I just finished the engraving for Mount Baker but I changed my mind. <coughs> there are two layers of glass engraving. The very front will be lit with a combination of blue and white and orange LEDs. I'm doing that because there is a phenomenon observed here and that's called alpenglow. When the sun is setting on the mountain and the valleys are shrouded in darkness, <coughs> the mountain or part of the mountain can glow orange for a while. I'm trying to simulate that with orange on one side that would face the setting sun, then white in the center, then a bluish glow which would be the side away from the sun. Now behind this front layer of engraving, which is very fine lines, I made another layer which is much thicker lines that are actually carved into the glass. This will be lit with blue and white LEDs. These will hopefully simulate the glaciers on the mountain. And of course, this being a piece of art, it's going to take an enormous amount of artistic liberty. I'm going to proceed to use the silicon glue to fasten the LEDs down for this layer. I'm going to wire them, then glue the top or the next layer of glass on top of that, of course with the engraving facing away from the viewer, then I glue the LED for this layer and that will probably conclude the project and the next portion of the video will be me showing off the fully completed sculpture and I'll also take some stills that can be put on a website. Now you see the finished sculpture. I am first showing it to you 
without any of the lights on, but with just the room light. So you can see what the sculpture looks like without the light. You see the metal and the glass work. I'm going to zoom in. You can just see some of the engravings of the buildings as well as the engravings with the top of Mount, ba Mount Baker you see on the top. What I'm going to do now is to slowly bring the lights up and then I have to take the exposure down on the camera. I need to warn you that photographing this sculpture when it's lit it's extremely difficult to do and next to impossible to capture both the lights from the sculpture and the lights reflecting off of the sculpture from the room. So here we go. I'm going to bring the lights up. Now mind you, you will have a power pack that plugged into the wall for this. You will not be, need to have the laboratory bench power supply. So Now here you see it lit. As you see it's overexposed. So what I'm going to do is first of all bring the f-stop all the way down. Okay now I'm down to f-16. I'm going to take the ISO as an ISO 4000, bring that down uh, to about ISO 1000. Let's bring the f-stop to say 11 or so. Now that's going to show you a little bit more of the colors. Now, these colors that you're seeing are by no means the colors are on the sculpture itself, um, but at least it gives you an idea. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to slowly rotate the sculpture back and forth so you can see the shimmering effect on the metal. You see the, how the lights shimmer on the metal as you walk past the sculpture. The colors for these torches are more violet than you see in the picture. You see them as blue in the picture. The vibrant reds and yellows here are not quite as strong in the picture. And the multiple colors on the top of Mount Baker, over to the left is supposed to be the oranges and the yellows that symbolize the alpine glow or sunset on the mountain. As you get towards the side of the mountain away from the sun, it gets more blue. The buildings, the Old City Hall is red and orange. The Old Main at Western Washington University is kind of white, uh, white and yellow. The Mount Baker Theater is violet and blue, along with the Artist Collective. And finally, the very center, it's hard to see it, in the photograph is the Bellingham Towers along with the Bellingham Hotel sign are in white. It is far easier to see it um, when you're seeing the real thing. I'm going to provide a couple of still photographs, but again, they're not going to do this sculpture any justice. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring the exposure back up, open the iris a little bit, like so, I'm going to slowly bring the lights down again. And bring the exposure up some more. The ISO about 5,000. I'm just, for the fun of it, going to 
move the sculpture back and forth to show you how it shimmers in the ambient light of the room. So that's pretty much it that I can show you here. You just have to look forward to seeing it in person at the Linux Festival event. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.